There's always the case that comes along that taxes the extreme investigative abilities of a police force. The mounted police was no difficult, uh, no different than anyone else in that, but the difficulties it can come. And in this particular case, it was one where there was decaying human remains. This was a case that really taxed the investigative abilities of the police both in British Columbia and Alberta, and indeed extended internationally. It started with a trucker who found himself on a remote part of the highway, needing to relieve himself. So he stopped his rig and walked down a side road. As he stood there, he saw two garbage bags in the ditch. When he was finished what he was doing, he went down and kicked the one bag and found it was quite heavy. Walked over to the other one, kicked it, found it was quite heavy. His curiosity aroused, he opened the one bag, found it was tied with a nylon rope, under which was a blanket, under which was the decaying half of a severed female body. The investigation did its best to identify that body through all the normal sources, but it couldn't be determined. It zeroed in on the blankets. These blankets were smaller than the average standard blanket for North, of North American manufacture. We had great difficulty over the months, but we felt that the clue was going to, st going to come from if we could determine where these blankets came from. In fr a bit of frustration at the end, we decided we would go to the press. The press was most helpful, and they advertised these on a weekend magazine and used the description that we, the Mounted Police, had given in that it was a blue blanket with a white pattern of a rabbit's head on it. It was only a matter of about two days till we got a phone call from a lady in Richmond who basically chastised us for our interpretation of the pattern. And she very quickly said, if you turn that pattern round the other way, you'll see it as a rose with the leaves dropped down. And the reason that I know that is they are the very type of blanket that my grandmother bought when she came from Finland. We followed up on that very, very quickly. That piece of public information was really the success that turned this whole case around. Stemming from that, we went over to the Finnish police. They were most helpful. They found that the blankets had been manufactured in Finland. Manufacturing had stopped in 1951. They anticipated that the last blankets cleared the stores in 1953. We were working on a period some 20 years later. But because of that connection, we were able to take the parts of evidence that we had, which included dental impressions. It was a very slight piece of information, but we sent that over to the Finnish police. And through their processes, they were able to trace a dentist in a small village in northern Finland who had done the dental work on this lady before she emigrated to Canada. That evidence brought us back to Edmonton, where the investigators in Edmonton were able to confirm the identity of the body, find out her lifestyle there, and eventually laid and were successful in a prosecution for murder against her husband.